Hello everyone, my name is Arsh Kratyala. I'm a functional consultant with Western Computer and welcome to this presentation on data migration within Dynamics 365 operations. This will be a series of videos outlining the various features that are available and highlighting the differences between what's available now and what was available in AX 2012. This first video is going to start with some basic setup for data migration. Now unlike AX 2012, Data Migration, or the Data Import Export Framework, was a separate module. In new Dynamic 365 operations, data management is a workspace within the system. So to get to there, you can, from this home page, find the Data Management tab and click it. You can alternatively go into the System Administration module and then click Data Management. When this opens, this now opens the workspace that we're using. So for this video, I specifically want to look at this configure data sources tile. A data source is what format your data is in before you migrate it into Dynamics 365 operations. So when you look at the Contoso environment, Microsoft ships a number of different formats. When you do your own, this will be blank and you will generally only set up two to three different types of formats that you're migrating from. So for the moment, let's go ahead and create our own. So I'm going to create a new one. And I will just give this a name of demo. And then we have type. Type tells us where we're going to import it from. The most commonly used one was file. File means that I'm going to have an external file saved somewhere on my machine and import it into D365 operations. You also have the ODBC, which is a remnant from AX2012. This one allows you to connect to a SQL database and then migrate from there. And if you have an Azure SQL database, you can choose this option here. Packages are an interesting new feature in Dynamics 365 operations, and we will cover these in a later video. For now, I'm going to just choose file. In file, you have four different file formats. Delimited used to be the most popular one. Delimited almost always equated to CSV. And what this means is that it's going to look for a file with a certain format. You can say whether the first row is a header. My personal preference is to always ensure that this is checked yes. You then say what's going to divide up my rows and what's going to divide up my columns. So how does the system know that we've gone to a new row? In most cases, in almost every case, in fact, in every case that I've worked on, this row delimiter is always CRLF, which means it's a line break. So if I open up a simple notepad file, if I have something that says line one, and then I have an enter, and then line two, CRLF tells us that these are two different records for import. So line one, line two, broken up by an enter. The column delimiter, you have a few different options. You can also do line breaks, but that becomes very complicated. The most popular are to use one of these three, and within the three, comma is hands down the most heavily used. And that's what CSV stands for, comma separated values. In this, what it means is if you have multiple fields, so let's go back and I said I had field one, comma, field two, that means that the system knows anytime it sees a comma that this now refers to a different field. So you would have something like value one, comma, value two. And so you would have your columns separated by commas. This is very popularly used. A reason for this is because that with an Excel file, if you save it as a CSV, it will automatically produce it into a notepad type file with commas being your column breaks. Text qualifier is an important field. What it does, let's imagine you have a value in one of your records that has a comma in it for the name. So let's say you were working with a vendor that was John, comma, and Sons. Now, if you just write it as John, comma, and Sons, the system will treat that column as a field break and will treat John as the name and then and Sons as the next available field. That would cause some problems because it would also cause a mismatch in the number of columns between your header and your rows. So what you want to do is you want to put something like quotation, which will tell it that anything within a quotation, no matter if it has a comma or not, is all part of that one field. This comma is also quite popular because if you save an Excel file as a CSV, any cell that has a comma in it will automatically be bookended by quotations. So this is your typical setup. However, in the newer version, a lot of this can be saved by simply selecting Excel. As you see then, there's no setup required. 
it will treat each column as a separate column and each row as a separate upload record. So Excel is quite popular and it will require a header row for you to use. Your other options, fixed width and XML, much less frequently used. Fixed width just provides you with a set number of characters or spaces to enter data and then it requires that same amount for all of them, very unwieldy. And XML requires you to write an XML script, which then the system can use to import. This requires some development help, and therefore most functional consultants bypass it. So, for as in most cases, you have delimited, which I'll set up, or you have Excel. Join me in my next session, and I'll show how to process an actual upload. Thank you.